Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our mining simulator by adding an inventory menu that can look something like this here, so that whenever the player collects the crystals, it'll show up in the menu. Okay, so we just collected one of the yellow crystals, and then we'll collect one of the red ones and the black one. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing how to make a menu that looks something like this here. But as long as you understand what's going on, you can make this look however you want to. So to make something like this, you're gonna start under the starter GUI and add a screen GUI. Inside of the screen GUI, you're going to add a frame. You can click and drag the frame to wherever you want to. I kept mine on the left-hand side. After that, you're gonna to wanna to resize the frame and you have a couple different options. If you have a plugin, you can use the plugin. So the plugin that I use is Auto Scale Lite, and to use this plugin, you can just go to Unit Conversion, and then click on Scale. And what that does, it converts the size into a scale, so that no matter what screen size you're on, it'll still look good. After that, you can resize it to whatever size you want. If you want to change the size in the Properties menu, the numbers I used was 0.2 for the first part of it, and then for the second part, it's going to be 0.9. Okay, so that'll change the size to this right here. After that, you can customize the way this looks. The first thing I did was change the background color to a light gray. So something like that would work okay. After that, we're gonna change the background transparency to 0.25. For the border color, we're gonna change that to white. And then for the pixel size, let's go ahead and choose six. After that, we're going to start by inserting a text label for the title. For this one as well, you're going to want to scale it. So you can either use the plugin or the property section. After you do that, just make the changes that you want to in the properties menu. Okay, for this one, I made the background transparency equal to 1. And then down in the text section, I changed the text to inventory. I changed the font to highway. For the text color, I changed that to white. I selected the text scaled option. And then for the text stroke, that's black, and it has a transparency of 0.75. After you insert the title and make it look how you want to, we're going to insert the image labels. So the amount of image labels that you're going to insert is going to correspond to the number of crystals you have. In my case, I have six crystals, so that's why I have six different image labels. So to insert the image labels, you're just going to click next to the frame and insert a image label. It's going to look like this to start with until we insert the picture for it. So go ahead and just get those lined up to the size and position that you want. And like I mentioned before, and for anything in the future, make sure that you scale these with either the plugin or the property. Okay, so after you have the blank image labels inserted into the frame, we need to take some pictures of the crystal. So what I did is just use a part as a background. And then you're just going to drag the parts one by one onto the background. And then if you're on Windows, you can use the snipping tool. And with the snipping tool, you just want to make a box around the crystal. So something like that there. After that, you're going to want to save your image. You can save it wherever you want to, as long as it's easy to find later on. Okay, and you want to do the same thing for the other crystals. So drag them onto the background and then take a screenshot of it. If you don't have the snipping tool, I'm sure there's something online that's similar that you can download to do this. Okay, and after you have all the images saved to your computer, you're going to go to the View tab, and then you're going to click on Game Explorer right here. When you do that, it's going to open up this menu right here. What you want to do in this menu is locate the Images folder. You're going to right-click and press Add Assets. If all your images are in the same location like this here, then you can just select them all at once, and then press Open. After you do that, it's going to import the images into this folder so that you can put them in the image labels over here. Okay, so once you see the images inside the folder, you can now add them onto the image labels. To do that, go back to the screen GUI and the image label. Once you click on the image label, you're going to go down to this section right here where it says image. You're going to click on this part right here, and you can insert whatever image you want to. Okay, if you don't see this section right here or this part is not working, it's probably because you don't have your game published. So make sure before you do this part that you publish your game. After you publish it, then you can come back to this part and it should be working. So for the other ones, you're just going to follow the same steps. Just go down to Image, click on this part right here, and insert the image. 
The last step is going to be adding the text label for the value of the crystal. So to do that, just go up to your frame, click on the plus sign, and then add a text label. Go ahead and resize it to whatever size you want to. For this one right here, I made the background transparency equal to 1. And then down for the text section, I changed the text to 0. I selected text scaled. And that's all you really need to do with it. You can make other changes if you want to. And once you have one the way you want to, rather than inserting a new text label in the Explorer menu, you can just click on this one right here and press Control D. That'll make a copy of it that you can just move to the next location. And then you just continue that for all the different labels. Okay, and there we go. So the last step is going to be adding this button right here so that we can open and close this menu. So go over to the frame and click on the plus sign. And then we're going to be adding a text button. Go ahead and resize this to whatever shape you want. And then for the text part, you're going to change it to this symbol right here. So this symbol is close to the letter M on most keyboards. Go ahead and select the text scaled option. And then if you want to, for the background transparency, let's change that to 0 0.25. Another thing that you can do is change the border size to 0 so it doesn't have any outline. And that should be good enough for now. You can make any other changes that you want to. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is move this frame onto the left side of the screen. The numbers I use for the position are 0 for the first part. And then for the second part, you can use 0 0.05. And that should move it to the left side of the screen right on the edge. And now that we have this one made, I'm going to go ahead and delete it so we can focus on the one I did before. All right, and when you're done, it should look something like this here. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. As long as you understand what's going on, you can make whatever changes you need to in the script. Okay, and before we move on to the script, it's important that we rename the items inside of the frame. So for the frame itself, that's called inventory. This button right here, I called open with a capital O. And then for each of the image labels, it's crystal one through the amount of crystals you have. These are the text labels for the amount, and that's gonna be amount one, and it's gonna go through the amount of crystals that you have. And the last part down here is gonna be the text label for the title. Okay, so that's very important if you wanna follow along with the script that you rename these items inside the frame to what I have on the screen. Okay, and as far as the script goes, since it's kind of repetitive, and it's gonna vary depending on how you set up your menu, I'm just going to go over the script and the different parts of it. That way you can understand it and use it in your situation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do for the script is we're going to say local frame is equal to script.parent. So this is going to be a reference for our frame right here. After that, we're going to make a variable for the local player. So we're going to say local player is equal to game.players.localPlayer. After that, we're going to make a variable for the player's inventory. To do that, we're going to say player. And then we're going to say wait for child. And then we're going to be waiting for the inventory folder. So this inventory folder was created in the server script service. So the inventory folder was created right here. And that's what we're trying to reference on the local script over here. Okay, after that, we're going to make a variable for the open button. So on our menu here, the open button is this one right here. To do that, we're going to say local open button is equal to frame. And then inside the frame, we called it open. Next will be a variable to see if the frame is open or closed. So we'll say local is open is equal to true. Okay, and this section right here is where it's going to start changing depending on how many crystals you have. In general, though, what we're going to do is we're going to say local crystal one. That's going to be equal to player inventory. So their inventory folder. Inside that folder, we're going to say find first child. And then what we're looking for inside of that folder is the name of the crystal. So this is another thing that we created on the server script service. So right here, we created the pink value for the pink crystal. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that crystal one is pink, because that's the first one we have in the menu here. Okay, so for crystal one, we're finding that inside of the inventory folder. And then we're going to say local crystal one label, and that's going to be equal to frame dot amount one. So you want to make sure that this part matches to the first label in the menu. Okay, after that, you're going to follow the same process. So we're going to say local crystal 2. This is going to be equal to the green crystal, because that's the second one in the menu. And then we're going to say crystal 2 label is equal to amount 2, because that's the second one in the menu. And then that's just going to continue for all the other crystals. So if you only have three crystals, then you'd only do the first three. If you have more than six crystals, then just follow the same process, but add more lines like this. Okay, this next section is also going to vary depending on how many crystals you have. 
but the process is almost exactly the same for each one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with crystal 1, which is the value for the pink crystal. We're going to say dot changed to trigger this function whenever the value changes. And then whenever this value changes, what we're going to do is we're going to say crystal 1 label, which is talking about this label right here. And we're going to set its text equal to the value of the crystal. So in the prior video, we set it up that whenever a player touches one of the crystals, like this one here, it's going to change the value inside of the inventory folder. So what we're doing on the local script is whenever the player touches that part, in addition to adding it to the value, we're also going to set the text for that label equal to whatever the value is. Okay, that's going to be the same for the other crystals. So just as an example for crystal 2, we're going to start by saying crystal 2 dot changed. This time it's going to be the crystal 2 label. And we're going to set the text equal to the crystal 2 value. That process is going to stay the same for the other crystals. So it really just depends on how many crystals you have. This section down here is going to do the tween for the menu animation. So when I click on this button right here, it'll glide to the left if it's open. And then if it's closed, when I click on this button, it'll glide to the right. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to say open button. So this is a variable that we created at the top for this button right here. We're going to say dot mouse button one click. So when this button is clicked, we're going to connect this to a function. What we're going to do inside this function is check to see whether is open is equal to true or false. In the beginning, we set it equal to true. What it's going to do is run this line right here. And what this is going to do, it's going to start with the frame. It's going to tween the position, which is how we're going to do the animation. And then inside the parentheses, we have a couple different values. It's going to start with a udim2 value, which is how we're going to set the position of the GUI. These two values right here are different styles for the animation. And I'll have links down in the description, which you can take a look at to see what the different options are. This value right here is the time. So whenever I click on the button, it's going to take one second to go from its current position to the new position. And this value right here is whether it can be interrupted or not. And like I said before, I'll have links in the description where you can take a look at each of the values. As far as the values for the UDEM2, this one right here, which is the third number, so 1, 2, 3, you want to match this number to the frame's Y position. If you click on your frame and then scroll down to Position in the Properties menu, you want to match this number to whatever you see right here. For the first number, you want to match this to the negative version of the size. So if your size is 0.2, then you're going to put negative 0.2. If your size is 0.4, then you would say negative 0.4. Okay, the else statement is going to be if the frame is closed. So if the frame is closed, we want to bring it back to the screen. To do that, we're going to do the same thing. So for this first part, it's going to match whatever number you have for the first position. So since I have 0, I'm just going to put a 0 there as well. If you had something like 0.1, then you would put 0.1 here. Okay, this number is going to be the same as this one. And like I said before, you want to match this number to whatever you have right here. And the last part right here is reversing the value of is open. So when it starts this function, if is open is equal to true, then it's going to set it equal to false. If it comes through this and is open is false, then down here it'll change false equal to true. Okay, and once you finish, everything should be good to go. If you're trying this out yourself, I would recommend not worrying about this part until the very end. Just make sure that everything above here works, and then you can add in the animation. Okay, so once your player's in the game, they should be able to click on this button right here to close the menu. When they click the button again, it's going to open the menu. And then you can play around with these numbers right here to change how it looks. So let's go ahead and try one change, and then we'll end with this video. Okay, so let's say for whatever reason, I want the menu to open quickly, but close slowly. So let's go ahead and try two seconds for the close. And then for the open part, we'll try 0.5. Okay, so now if the player clicks on this button here, it closes pretty slowly. But when they click it to open it, it's much faster. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I know there was a lot of steps in this video, and there's quite a few things that can go wrong. I think this will be good practice to try to do by yourself to see if you can set it up. I'm going to also leave a download link for this game, so that if you just want to download it and customize it, you can do that too. But like I mentioned before, I think this would be really good practice if you try to do it by yourself. Even if you're not able to get it all the way, just having the experience of trying to do it will be very helpful. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.